Hello friends, Brian here, downtown Boulder, beautiful summer day here. Mm -hmm. Just feeling into things here, feeling in, mm -hmm. letting it come through, letting it all come through. It's fun to come down here and people watch and just to kind of tune in to all the different cultures, the different energies that are here. And Boulder is a very diverse place, especially on the weekends, because there's a ton of tourists. They're basically everyone that you'll see around me in the background are tourists. Kind of come in to check out the city on the weekend. So you can learn a lot about yourself. <laughs> As you interact with other people who have different mindsets, different ideas, different beliefs, different thoughts on what you know what life should be and what's normal and what's right and what's wrong and <laughs> it's interesting there's this guy who kind of showed up here in Boulder I don't know about two months ago and he is kind of the proverbial like Jesus guy who he sets up his signs and he even has like his little soapbox that he sets up and he stands up and he holds his Bible and as people walk by, you know, he talks to them about, you know, needing to repent for their sins and how, um, you know, God needs them to to be redeemed and he's, he's, he's pretty loud. <laughs> and it's been interesting for me to kind of like feel into that as uh, I walk by coming out of a Christian background and I was I was never the background that I came from wasn't quite that aggressive in its energy but not too far from that not too far from that what I grew up in you know I went to camps growing up um, and in fact I'm from New York upstate New York but I a summer camp that I went to for a couple years was in Manitou Springs, Colorado, which is about two hours from here, and it was very much a like looking back on it, it was very much like a Christian indoctrination camp for young people. It was very much about crafting a worldview that's based on Christianity and kind of teaching kids um, how to see the world through that lens and how to defend that lens. And a part of that camp was was learning how to go out and street witness to people tell them about Jesus and tell them about um, becoming saved and going to heaven and I never felt comfortable with the street witnessing in fact I never really did it at all I kind of like avoided it as I came up we were supposed to do it but I just you know if something doesn't feel right to me usually I find a way to not do it <laughs> even while I was in that thick dense community of very limiting beliefs because it's really it's based on this whole mindset the whole belief, you know, what Christianity is and what this gentleman here who shows up here, it's all looking at people as though we're all bad and broken and that only God is good. That only that Jesus was the only good person. Everyone else is tainted by original sin, tainted by just an inherent badness. And that's really what Christianity is, what it's become. You know, it wasn't what Jesus' message was. It was the opposite. He was saying, you know, hey, we're all good. We're all one. You know, um, the kingdom of God is within, the kingdom of heaven is here and now, and all the Pharisees, who were the real religious types of his time, they were the ones who were trying to follow all the rules, and you know, they had all these rules for what you needed to do to keep God happy and to please God and to be in right uh, standing with God. And it's kind of just like this guy here um, that I was talking about that shows up here in Boulder. And last night, he was right over there. And he had his signs and he had his stuff and he started to do his talk and I was sitting right here on this bench and it was all quiet here and then when he was setting his stuff up I realized okay he's going to start talking loud and I'm not going to like that and I knew like it'll be interesting to see how I deal with this because I'm not going to get up and walk away because I was here first <laughs> and I like this spot um, and I don't feel like getting up and leaving but I also don't feel like having somebody talking really loud so you know, this is an example of how we, you know, can tune into our intuition. And it really, you know, it conjures up a lot of good questions in conflict because people have the, these ideas of what's right, what's wrong, what's nice, what's okay. You know, there's a lot of um, memes and quotes that go around Facebook and go around the internet that talk about being compassionate and never doing wrong to others and being kind and being loving. But all of those are really just people's ideas. Because in a conflict situation, you know, who's the judge of what's kind? 
who's the judge of what is wrong in terms of wronging another person? And that's why when people have these ideas of the way that we should be and they try to hold on to them, then once conflict comes up, you know, shit gets wonky. <laughs> Because when you have different people engaging and they both think that they know what is compassionate or what is kind or what is, you know, um, right and what the other person should be doing, that's when people really come up against each other in conflict once, once conflict is allowed to happen. Most people just avoid conflict. Like with the guy last night, when he came over here and set up his stuff and he got up on a soapbox and he started talking and it getting louder and louder and louder and it's just... You know, it's at a pace. It's at a like a level where he's kind of yelling. Most people would just get annoyed and and like walk away to avoid that. But how I live is I'm anchored into myself, and what I'm I'm sharing this to encourage you to feel into this about you know what's right, what's wrong for you. And ultimately, the point that I'm making is that there is no right or wrong that we can know on an ultimate level except what feels right to us in each moment. You know, there might be a time where I, something is, 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 is bothering me or starting to come into my experience that's loud or that's overwhelming or whatever, and I might decide, you know what, I'm going to get up and walk away in order to deal with that. But in life, we can't just continually walk away from that which we feel pressured by or we will become pressured on all sides and boxed in. And ultimately, that's like what depression is a result of, a feeling like closed in, boxed in by life. Okay? Most people who feel stuck, who just feel victimized, who feel ah, frustrated and um, cynical, it's because they haven't stood up for what feels right to them and they haven't given themselves the permission, the freedom to do that. So as this guy started to talk loud, he like came over right near me and he was right in front of me on this rock right there. And he started talking to me, young man. It's just funny that he called me that because I don't know, he appears to be about my age. He was like, young man, have you repented of your sins? And I just looked over at him with this really stern look and I just shook my head. Like, do not go here with me. And he got a little closer and I said, take one step closer and see what happens. And he said, are you threatening me? And I looked him right in the eye and I said, take one step closer and see what happens. So he sat down on that rock over there and he said, I'm not going anywhere. And I just looked at him right in the eye. And he said, you need to repent. <laughs> you need to, you know, he went on this whole thing. I'm just looking through his eyes. Okay, and this is where so many people say, oh, you need to be compassionate, you need to be kind. And you know what, I tune into what's right here in the moment, and I speak boldly and truly, and sometimes it's what comes out of me is the most tender, connected. But there are times when f boldness comes out of me, and I trust and know that whatever comes through me in the moment is exactly what's right for that situation. And if it has a, a flavor of fierceness to it, then that's what's meant to be, and I'm not afraid to play that part. And so I looked him right in the eye and I said, you can take your judgments, roll them up really tight, and shove them up your ass. Just looked him right in the eye. You should have seen the look on his face. His eyes got real big. And then you'll never believe it. He goes, well, wait. Then I said, that's where you'll find your freedom. <laughs> And then he looked me right in the eye and he's like, young man, are you a homosexual? And he stood, I could tell he was getting really uncomfortable. And I looked him right in the eye and I leaned in a little bit. And I was like, why do you ask? He's like, well, are you a homosexual? And I said, why do you ask? And he said, well, you're talking about putting something up there and that I'll find my freedom there. Are you a homosexual? And I looked at him one more time and he started to walk away and I said, why do you ask? And his eyes got really big and he moved away and he went, he picked up his stuff and he left. And there I was, back in my quiet. Nobody preaching at me, nobody judging me, nobody telling me what to do. And some of you hear me tell the story and you're like, wow, that sounds mean. And really that's the heart of this message. 
is poking at this idea that there's something that we can call mean. You know, imagine somebody was breaking into your house or like about to and you knew it and you got right in their face and said, no, 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 don't you dare come in here. My family's in here, don't you dare. Imagine somebody stepped up and saw your energy and saw your finger, said, that's, you seem really mean. That seems really mean. Well, doesn't it make it obviously simple in that example or in that analogy? That, you know, mean is in the eye of the beholder. Mean is just a judgment term that we put on people who are acting in ways that we don't like and that seem aggressive. See, our culture has this thing against boldness, against ferocity, because people think that if it gets out of hand, that it will hurt them. And our society wants to put a cap on people's boldness. And when people speak in ways that seem fierce, everyone's like, oh, you know, he's mean, he's angry, something's wrong with him. But you know what? Healthy anger, healthy ferocity is what protects people. It's what stands up for others. It's what stands up for ourselves. It what, it's what takes energies like that, that we're coming up against me, so this energy of judgment, this energy of you're bad and you need to change. And when I said to him, take one step closer and see what happens, you know, he interpreted that as, as I'm threat threatening to, to hurt him physically. But I knew in my heart that I wasn't. I knew that that was just a statement that was actually inviting him closer into my presence. Because when you come into my presence and you make eye contact with me like you are right now, and you feel the certainty, the openness, and the truth that is right here, <laughs> it transforms things. It changes things. It brings about newness, new perspective. And so I knew there was no part of me that was threatening to hurt him or to touch him. I never would touch anyone except out of self-defense or, or to protect another person that's getting um, abducted or accosted or getting attacked. Okay, but I invite that sometimes with people. I say, step closer to me, and they get all nervous. It's because they know that there's a certain ferocity here. And so I encourage you to relax and tune into your own sense of right, your own sense of boldness and ferocity, and give yourself permission that when it feels right to speak with a certain amount of force or to speak with a certain amount of volume, that other people's judgments of that's mean or that's rude or that's wrong or that's too angry, those are just the forces of judgment, just like that guy that want to keep you down, keep you down. And when we speak to each other out of conviction, and when I say conviction, I mean out of that place within us that just knows that we're speaking our truth. It's not necessarily the truth, but it's our truth. It's what feels right to us in the moment. And when we come into a relationship with each other like that, and we don't smile and avoid conflict and you know, hide behind bullshit smiles or walk away and avoid conflict because you know, write the other person off when we show up eye to eye. That's when real relationship happens. You know, that guy that I had that conflict with, you know, he left. But I know that our eye contact and our time and presence together, that that planted a seed within him. I don't know where it will go. I don't need to change him. I don't need him to be different. But I know when we bring truth and we bring presence to each other, the truth surfaces. The light within us all gets brighter as we show up in relationship. So that's what I'm inviting you to do, is to stand strong in your truth and to know that what feels right for you in the moment is right for you in the moment, regardless of what other people say. And when people attack you for being you in the moment, that's because they aren't giving themselves the same permission. They have fears within themselves that are getting triggered and they're needing to push you down. But you don't have to let yourself get pushed down. You can stand firm, just like I did on this bench. And I didn't get up and walk away. I spoke my truth. I engaged with him in the way that felt right for me. And I maintained my position here in peace. And here I am the next day, same place. It's my spot. So I hope you, beautiful person, are having a beautiful day. Whatever emotions are there for you today, even if today's a sad day, a hurting day, a lonely day, those are beautiful experiences as well so as we surrender to them, allow them to become who we are so we can work through them, navigate through them, feel through them. And on the other side of all of our emotions, as we let them go and we process them and we feel them and we release them, it's peace, joy, excitement, hope in the future, a knowing that the future is bright, because it is. So from my heart to yours, peace. Have a great day. I love you.